No one wants to spend their time near the power socket waiting for their phone to get those 100%. Some prefer cables, some prefer wireless stands, and now we even have this MagSafe fancy charger. We have an 18 watt charger brick, 20 watt charger brick, 30 watt charger brick. But what's the best solution possible? And I've spent weeks in charging and recharging all the iPhones, and today I'm ready to tell you what is the most optimal way to do it. Hey guys, it's Alex and welcome to the Geeks Table. And before we start, I should say that all the charging was done with the following conditions. The airplane mode was on, the screen brightness was set to 50%, low power mode was off, as well as the optimized battery charging. Let's say that you bought a new iPhone with a USB-C cable and you have an 18 watt charger brick from an old model. So let's see how they perform together. Notice that the iPhone 12 mini has the smallest battery, then goes iPhone 12 and 12 Pro, then 11 Pro, and finally 12 Pro Max with the biggest battery among all of them. So depending on the model, you should expect something around 1 hour and 40 minutes to charge your phone. This year, Apple has introduced the 20W charger brick, which looks exactly the same as the last year's 18W charger brick. So let's see if those two watts make a difference. And I'd say that the process was pretty much similar, and we got very close results with the previous experiment. But if we compare, we'll see that surprisingly, the iPhone 11 Pro and the 12 Pro took 12 more minutes to get their battery charged. The only reason that I think of is probably the heat control, because, well, no one wants to be the next Galaxy Note 7, so when the device gets warmer, the charger reduces its power. I also have this 30 watt charger brick from my MacBook 12, so let's test it out and see if with more power comes a faster charging. So after looking at the results, I must say that none of the models broke their limits. And we didn't get any dramatic decrease in the charging time. In fact, iPhone 11 Pro, 12 and 12 Pro were charging even longer. Also there is a myth that when charging from a MacBook, the iPhone charges much faster. Let's check it out. I have my MacBook 15 connected to a charger and all the iPhones were connected to it one by one. If you don't have a USB-C charger for your iPhone, but you have a Mac, you may charge it really fast from it. And as you can see, the charging time is very much close to the previous measurements. Now let's go to the wireless world. This was really tricky, and I actually screw up a few recordings because it took insanely long time to make a video, but here are the results. This is a standard Qi wireless charger, and I should say that the way you put your phone on it really affects the charging time. For example, the iPhone 12 Pro couldn't make it above 81% after 18 hours. This is a nice way to charge your phone at night, since we have a lot of time and we're not in a hurry. And I usually use this Samsung stand and well, this one is from Samsung, but there are a lot of other manufacturers that produce this type of design for charging pads. And I like this type of design because you don't have much freedom in placing the phone and usually it matches correctly and I get my 100% battery in the morning with no problem. But let's see if it's worth buying the new MagSafe charger. Since it always attaches correctly on the iPhone 12 lineup, Apple feels safe to increase the power and we should theoretically get a faster charging time. And this is how it performs with the 18 watt charger brick. I don't really know why, but iPhone 12 Pro Max with the biggest battery could make it in just 3 hours 12 minutes. But the iPhone 12 was charging for 4 hours and a half which is the same as the 11 Pro. But MagSafe works in a reduced power mode with the 11 Pro. So, well, it's really, really weird. 
But moving on to the MagSafe with the 20 watt charger. Apple says you can get the maximum of the MagSafe with this power brick and I can see that the charging time indeed got reduced for around 10 to 15 minutes. Not much, but still a bit better. And finally I tried the 30 watt charger with the MagSafe. I thought that if a 20 watt charger brick was better than the 18 watt one, then maybe a 30 watt brick will decrease the time even more. But same as with Lightning, we didn't get any improvements at all. Well, except the iPhone 11 Pro. So let's finalize the experiment. If you already have a wireless charger, it's a good way to charge your phone overnight. And that's actually better for your battery since the fast charging reduces the capacity of the battery over time. If you wish to buy a power brick, no need to buy a huge one, 20 watt will be enough. And if you have the 18 watt charger brick, no need to upgrade, those 2 watts won't make a difference. The MagSafe option looks a bit gimmicky to me. If I need to charge fast, I would usually go with the Lightning option and I will get my 100% in 1 hour and 30 minutes. And if I'm not in a hurry, I would usually go with the wireless option to get my 100% overnight. So buying an extra accessory to have a 3 hours charging option doesn't seem right to me. But overall, it's a nice accessory, so if you have an iPhone 12, one of the lineup, and you don't yet have a wireless charger, probably this is a good option to have a wireless capability. And now I'm curious to know how do you charge your phone? Let me know down in the comments and hit a like, subscribe, and tick that notification bell so you won't miss any reviews. It's been Alex, and see you at the Geeks Table. Bye-bye.